Hello, YouTube. Um, I have a question for uh, my atheist comrades, brothers and sisters. Um, I think that being an atheist um, requires a very intimate knowledge of, of the theological traditions. Um, it because, of course, in stating I am an atheist, uh, I am rejecting the entirety, or I, I have the potential to reject the entirety of, of the theological tradition and all of the thought thereof, and therefore I feel like we as atheists should have a, a very intimate understanding of the, the theological canon. Um, to the point where we should probably be able to argue uh, theological points uh, just as well as the theist. Um, if only to, if only as an exercise, we should be able to do that. Um, so it's in in that spirit then that uh, I would ask, what is your favorite? theological text that is not a holy book, right? Um, this is, a, a, I think, an important question. Um, I think that there's, there's a lot of really interesting readings. My cat's being fun. I think that there's a lot of interesting readings of, of theological texts, um, and I think there's a lot of beautiful readings. A theological text, secondary literature, and etc. I think there are a lot of beautiful descriptions of religious experience that fall outside of, of merely holy books, and um, and I feel like or I presume that that the atheist community um, has a knowledge of of that body of work. Um, and I will read you a passage from, uh, it, it's a difficult question for me to answer. I have a few favorites. Um, Marguerite Porette's uh, uh, The Mirror of Simple Souls is one, um, one of my personal favorites. She's a Christian, female Christian mystic from the medieval period. Um, and if you read the Christian mystics, or the female Christian mystics, um, there are certain things which are, are just astounding, like the fact that Jesus is very uh, sexualized, um, uh, that which is, is shocking to read when you first encounter, you know, the body of Jesus as an image is, is deeply sexualized for female Christian mystics in the medieval period. Um, uh, which is fascinating. I also have an attraction to to um, to heresies. Um, in some way, I feel like uh, and Marguerite Porette was was associated with the heresy of the free spirit. Um, I think that in some way you can't understand Christianity without having a functional understanding of of the Christian heresies and and why they were excluded and. Um, and what they thought about various things. I think Marcionism is a, is a really interesting um, uh, idea, for instance. Marcionism, um, uh, the best description I've heard of it was from Critchley, and, and he describes in Paul that there's this stretched line in Paul from, from creation to, um, to redemption. And uh, th but that line is stretched, right? And Marcionism cuts that line, and Marcionism says says um, that it or organizes things around two gods: the God of the Old Testament and the God of the New Testament. The order of creation and the order of redemption. The order of law and the order of love, right? And life, um, which then has effects into contemporary philosophy, like Agamben wrote a book on Paul that ends with the line, um, is it possible to conceive of life in a non-relation to law, and law in a non-relation to life? That's a, that's a really a Marcionite question, um, in, in a certain way. That's kind of metaphorical. Um, 
but but I think that's a really interesting idea. Um, uh, and so I would ask this question to to my Christian followers: um, what what is your favorite heresy? Um, and and that would include, uh, I think, atheist texts. I would include those in in the word heresy and take take a really broad meaning of that term. Um, but my uh, those those are sort of follow up pieces that that I like. Um, but I'm going to read a passage from from um, my my favorite theological text. I think, um, uh, and I hope. Uh, you think about it and enjoy it, and it's it's from Fear and Trembling by Kierkegaard. I don't know how long it's going to take me to read this, so this video might be long, so I apologize. Um, it's from Fear and Trembling, and it, here he's... Fear and Trembling is the work where he's uh, talking. It, it's his thoughts on, on Abraham, and the story of Abraham and Isaac. Um, and Kierkegaard reads an am gives an amazing reading of Abraham and Isaac, where... What he basically comes to is that, like, you know, what God asks Abraham to do in uh, sacrificing Isaac is not he he's he's not just asking him to to uh, murder his to he's not asking him to give up a possession right he's also asking him to give up his claim to being an ethical being right. So the sacrifice is not just the son, but the sacrifice is the ethical identity of Abraham. Um, so therefore, the more heinous and criminal you conceive of this act to be, um, and Kierkegaard is you know very explicitly labels Abraham as as a criminal um, or or an unethical being, you know. Um, the the more criminal Abraham is, um, the more um, the the greater he is in a in a certain way. And and you know I, I don't have on time to unpack exactly what I mean by that. Um, but I'm going to read this passage because fear and trembling is also a very um, sensitive and and very human um, discourse on the question of faith and what faith is. For Kierkegaard and and what it does and and why it does what it does, why it's important um, for him. Um, so I'm going to read this passage in which he describes the person of faith. Um, uh, this is this video is already up to eight minutes, so you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut this video here, um, and then I'm going to make a separate video wherein I I read the passage. Um, but so that, that's my question for, for atheists. What's your favorite theological text that doesn't include holy books? Because I feel like we should all be uh, as intimately acquainted with the theological canon, or so intimately acquainted with it that, that we're able to answer this question, that we have personal favorites of, of you know, the greatest hits of theology, if you like. Um, uh, and... On the other side, on the Christians, what are, what's your favorite heresy or your favorite um, or your favorite anti-Christian work? Um, because again, as as Christians, I feel like you should probably have a really intimate knowledge of of um, the arguments against your position, right? Because uh, it's it's naive to to hold a belief without um, it without trying to destroy it, you know what I mean? Without without exposing it to the to the most radical doubt that you can, I think. Um, so thank you and I'll upload another video in the next twenty minutes or so in which I read that particular passage from Kierkegaard. Um, have a good day.